Robert P. Jones is the CEO of the Public Religion Research Institute and also author of the new book White Too Long, The Legacy of White Supremacy in American Christianity. Uh, Robert, thanks for your time. Really appreciate it. Oh, thanks. Yeah, I'm great. I'm really glad to be here. So let's uh, just 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 to get us into this topic. Can you talk a little bit about I mean, how how far back does the um, uh, interplay or overlap between white supremacy and American Christianity go? And is it a specific to certain denominations? That's a great yeah opener. Um, well, it goes all the way back, um, you know, is, is the thing there is to say, I mean, all the way back to the founding of, of the Republic. And in fact, you know what the the version of uh, kind of particularly white Protestant Christianity that lands on American shores, um, you know, brings with it this entanglement with white supremacy, really from its European uh, European roots. Um, so things like Manifest Destiny, uh, the idea that white Europeans are entitled to Native American lands, all the way from the very beginning. I mean, these are very much wrapped up with um, this uh, entanglement of of the idea that kind of white. Uh, white people are meant to be over others in kind of a racial hierarchy, and that this was legitimated by Christian belief, and it kind of brought and kind of came over, legitimated and packaged in uh, in a kind of white Christian theological package. Uh, when we look at the um, the Northern Baptist Southern Baptist split, which is something that has been written about from a number of different angles o o over the years. Um, how much was that split related to this issue of white supremacy? Yeah, well, it was it was the reason uh, really that, uh, you know, Baptists in the North and Baptists in the South parted ways. It, it was literally over whether a uh, ordained member of the clergy could enslave other human beings on the basis of the color of their skin and still, uh, you know, retain their status as a as a clergy person and that whether this was a legitimately Christian thing to do. And Baptists in the North rejected that view. Baptists in the South were so dedicated uh, to protecting, um, you know, not only this possibility, but this as a Christian norm, uh, that they literally split from their Northern brethren, and set up their own, um, you know, convention called the Southern Baptist Convention. That's where that name comes from uh, in 1845. So this is well before um, you know, even the Civil War. Um, uh, this is my home denomination, I should say, and that I, I grew up in, uh, in, as a Southern Baptist in Mississippi. Um, and uh, but, you know, that history, I think is one of the reasons why I wrote the book is, is um, that history is not well known, really. I mean, even even I growing up inside the church didn't find out about it until I was in seminary. So in my early in my early 20s. Uh, but the one thing to say to answer the first part of your question to your first question is that while I think this history is most um, kind of on the surface with a with an organization like the Southern Baptist Convention, uh, virtually every Protestant denomination split um, over the issue of slavery and white supremacy um, in the Civil War. The Methodist split, the Presbyterian split, the Episcopalians, uh, you know, split, split, um, and it was all really over this question um, of the legitimacy of, of of slavery, and then underneath that, the kind of you know bigger thing that um, that justifies that this idea um, of white of white supremacy.